Thanks. Get funding and everything. So bear with me with that. Uh, so there's uh, our colleague in uh, education department. He did all the questions. So I hope they are short ones, only five at most. But we'll see. So uh, this would be the pre-survey thing. So it, it's about demographics, as I remember. So you could scan this QR code, or your teacher would have this link in some a school classroom thing, you could get that also. So we start with this. Just let me know when you're done. If you have any questions, just let me know. I, I actually don't know what the questions are here for this one.
things to work you are done. You do you need any more time I can wait or I can go on? Okay. So yeah, I'm feeling I work on this area specifically how computers could help you understand analogies. So we'll see what analogies are, how they can help you, and how ChatGPT specifically can help you with analogies. So uh, there's another survey, but before that, so I'm I'm doing this to get to know what you know about analogies. So that would help me because with the other surveys after that I do my session that would help me too get the gap so that's why I'm doing this again so thank you. Okay so again it's on the QR code and I, I'm gonna I think I said I was gonna put them all the same but I just I just wanted to say it's a different survey just so I can survey for a minute and that's enough. So if you don't know any any answer to a question, just I don't think you can leave it blank, but you can say I don't know anything and just move forward.
I see most of your dance, so I'll understand. Uh, so let's just get the boring stuff out. So this is the kind of a formal definition of analogy that is designed basically for your age group. So what, what an analogy basically is, you try to make a connection between two seemingly different things, but you still make a connection, right? So that helps you to understand one thing in one context and transfer that knowledge to another thing. So we'll see examples, but this is the boring definition. So uh, this, I, I watch a lot of movies, so this is why this Forrest Gump thing comes. It, it has this score, like it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So this, this I think, is a good example of what an analogy is. We'll see different types of analogies, but this, this will start the thing. So uh, what do you see? What are the similarities or differences that you see in these two pictures? This is how, how, whatever you think. Do you see any similarities? The of the sun is Sorry? Going into darkness. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. You can inform us as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you see any similarities here? Above the beard and smile. Okay. So, in these situations, right? In both of these situations, there's a different type of similarities, not just similarity. What you can, what you just capture this relation of similarity. So, I'll, I'll show you this one thing to contrast this. Uh, You can see this, right? So this this last one here, it's also feeding. If someone says these are all instances of feeding, that is similarity. But then you understand that there is a connection between a uh, a mother and a, a, a child, something like that. So you understand that. I never ex explicitly said that, right? But you captured that. So humans' ability to capture that type of implicit, we may say. Relations are called analogies. So, uh, and let's see. Yes. So this this is called relational similarity and analogy is based on that. So uh, this is why humans have this ability to reason and understand the world better than other animals, and we see how other animals understand analogy, whether they understand that at all. So, um, so this is human ability. So, what about other animals, right? So, there is this test called relational mapping test, which is R and T stands for. Is it being recording? I'm doing recording. Yes. Yeah, this wonderful thing. Change the.
start with this animation. So we will show matching test with some kind of a test. So I don't know whether they did it on paper, but they try to do this with animals, namely uh, uh, great apes and that, that sort, to see whether they can identify analysis. What the scientists have uh, found out is different animals in the animal kingdom could identify similarity, but not analogy. Here, right? You could identify these two circles are same as two uh, 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 this these other picture, right? But there's a uh, triangle and a uh, rectangle there. You know that they're two different things. But the problem with the animal kingdom uh, that they say is they cannot do that comparison. So that was the difference. But they figured out that a lot of great apes could do this type of thing. And recently pigeons could do that and crows. But the difference was that they need a lot of uh, training to do this. So what they uh, later understood was that humans have their head of a great leap than the other animals. So that, that was the conclusion. So it's, it's a making able to make analogies is like a, a core of cognition in humans. So uh, what interesting analogies have you come across? Just anything that you can think of. Because features that uh, have taught you, right, probably would have used analogies. And probably in real life, you probably would have used analogies and you might not really think that it's an analogy. Because uh, in, in the previous session, right, uh, I think she was Sarah, she was talking about Rasa, the frameworks and chatbots and I think some one of you asked what Rasa was like and she was telling that it was like a BYI kit. So that's an analogy right there. So it's not direct similarity, but you understand when it is said like that, right? So you want to have any guesses for this? Interesting news. I don't know what. Like, oh, it's fine. Like earlier, he was talking about um, we hear reinforcement learning to um, train the dog. Oh, yeah. It's day before yesterday or something, I was here. So I'll, I'll start from some things from my life, right? So uh, I'm from this country called Sri Lanka. It's a very small country, very near to India. So uh, it's a small country, right? So we don't have very long winding roads, like very straight long roads, actually. There's a lot of people. Uh, so uh, I came to US in 2017. And uh, so I used to watch a lot of movies, mostly thrillers. And so in those thrillers, a lot of the times, someone would drive in a very lonely road, and these are very long roads, and something horrible would happen. And sometimes there would be a motel, and they would go to that motel and something horrible would happen. So I actually was making this analogy, okay, maybe that's true. When I actually came to US in 2017, there was this host family that was watching us. So one of the very first questions I asked her was, is, is this really happening? Are a lot of people getting killed in this type of thing? And he, she was like, I think she, she was surprised. And she was like, no, nothing like that happens. It's just movies. But I was trying to, make that analogy from the movie to real life, which is not actually the right thing to do. But then uh, I'll talk about this, uh, this picture right down here, this coconut and peach. Have you heard of coconut culture and peach culture? Have you heard of this thing? So that's again, when I came to US, uh, we do actually work as teaching assistants to professors, right? So we, would, we are given this, uh, introductory kind of course to get immersed in the culture and stuff because we'll get to work with a lot of you. So uh, in that course, uh, they talked about this. So they were like, uh, in North, North America, in Canada and US, the, the culture is like a peach. So yeah, there's not a hard shell that you have to crack. People would smile with you. They would talk with you a lot. So that's, that's the normal culture there. But when you get to the core, to really know them, the core would be very hard, uh, like that. But in coconut cultures, like in uh, countries like Germany or Switzerland, 
uh, those countries, they won't really uh, be very friendly at the very beginning. They might even seem rude, but that's just that shell outside. When you crack the shell, there's no hard uh, stone to get to. They're fully open. So that really helped me. I still remember that because that really helped me. And then I'll show you this one that every one of you is familiar, the Google Maps, right? This Google map is a 2D map that you see in your screen. And you look up and you see the 3D world and you map that, right? You take that analogy from the 2D map to the 3D world. So that is right there, an analogy. So those are three things that from my life. So yeah, okay. In a lot of things I read for this particular session, I they say it's a peach culture. It's you, Canada, US, it's a peach culture. Even Japan, some websites said that it was a peach culture. So, but for Sri Lanka, there was nothing there. So, <laughs> so yeah. Do you guys want to come again? I, mean, uh, I came to America, my, my impression was that it would be like cities everywhere. Because okay. whenever you see that like, movie in America, it's always about like big skyscrapers okay. and stuff. And so when I moved to South Carolina, okay. I was very surprised by the fact that there were like trees everywhere. The difference between cities and uh, yeah. so it's it's a challenge today for me to keep you guys awake. I did not pick this lot, so <laughs> do you guys want to talk about your analogies that you have come across or anything? You got in biology or um, in middle school and you learned the parts of the cell. How did your teacher teach you what each part does? They use analogies. The new, no, just with the nucleus. I don't know, but that's often when you see an education. Oh, nucleus is like the brain. Right. So, like, either comparing it to the larger body or to school or to, you know, yeah. the nucleus. <laughs> But like, but like the lysosomes are the, the, the powerhouse, right? That they try because to memorize, you can memorize all, but all the different parts do. But it's easier when you can make a connection to something you already know what it does, right? There's this very popular one where there's solar system and the atom. Uh, that is a very popular one. So uh, the relational similarity comes in there too. In the solar system, you have the sun in the middle, but in the atom, you don't have a sun, but you have the nucleus in the middle. So they're totally two different things, but you make that relational connection. So that is what is important. Uh, so why would you use analogies? You feel like it's a complicated thing. Why would you want to use that at all? So why? Uh, yeah, go okay. ahead. story why analogies are important. I think this is a very powerful story. So Copernicus was uh, a po Polish astronomer, if I remember correct. So he was in the late 1400s. Uh, he, 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 he came up with this radical idea that at that time people thought, okay, sun is the one that is moving. The other planets are still. So he, he came up with this radical idea, no, sun is still. Our planet and other planets are moving around it. So uh, after Copernicus, right, Kepler was a German uh, astrologer, he, uh, astronomer. He uh, actually championed this idea. Okay, I need to prove this. What should I do? So he had a lot of questions in his mind that he wanted answers to, right? 
One was this. Why is that the outermost planets move slower than the innermost planets? He could see that and could do the math, but he could not explain this. Why was this happening? So uh, initially, the, the idea was that there was some spirit or something like that that was uh, making these planets move. So initially, what people thought was, all these scientists actually thought was, okay, there are different spirits moving these planets. So the spirits moving planets that are uh, far away from the sun, maybe they are weaker. And the other spirits who are moving the planets that are closer to the sun, maybe they are stronger. That is what uh, Koppen, uh, Kepler initially thought. But then he thought, okay, what if, because sun is now not moving, right? What if the sun is the, uh, the spirit that is moving everyone? What if that happens? Can I explain that? So that is what he was saying. So how, so remember at this point, there was no uh, concept of gravity, right? There was no concept of gravity. After 80 years or some after this, the concept of gravity came. So there was no word to explain this, but he wanted to kind of see what happens. So, uh, so he was thinking of how to explain this. And again, the problem was, so he has to explain action in distance. So something, sun is doing something far away from me. <coughs> how would I explain this to someone? Would people believe me? So, uh, Analogy came to his rescue. So he was I, thinking, how would I explain this? So at that time, light was there, right? Like, I mean, they were doing, they were trying to understand light and all that. And he saw, thought, let me make an analogy between this moving power or the motive power of sun towards the other planets and light. So this is what he said. If light can travel undetectably on its way between the source and a destination, yet illuminates its destination, then so too could the motive force be undetectable on its way from sun to planet, yet affect the planet's motion once it's arrived at the planet. So that, that he actually wrote that in, in the book that he published of all this planetary motion and everything. So that is one, I think a very powerful reason for you to kind of think about analogies when you're trying to learn things. So this is, this is in 1500s, right? So, uh, so why would you use analogies? So one thing is to inspire creativity. So he did that explanation solely because he would make that analogy, right, with light. And remembering and understanding, make connections between two different things that you don't really understand. So, uh, have any analogies helped you in learning specific subjects or specific concepts? Okay. Okay. Firstly, just going back to the parts of the cell. Cell, okay. I know for like me, I had a project where we had to create analogies for each piece, so mm -hmm. did that really help you? Okay. Sorry. Like how would I say it? Yes. It's it's a mechanism for you to remember something, and it it has a focus on uh, uh, it, it kind of has some poetic like how would you remember something right the way you remember it. Uh, I think they're two different things, though. I guess like an analogy could be a mnemonic. Uh, sorry? Like an analogy could be a mnemonic if you use it to make something memorable. Okay. I think with uh, making something memorable comes understanding also. I think analogy gives that to you, too. Because let's say some you learn something and there's something else to be learned to from the thing that you know you will make that analogy that missing part but a memory you might not have that i think but yeah i have not thought about this connection but yeah. uh, so this is where i won't get at so uh, 
you guys are familiar with photosynthesis right so we'll see how we can kind of try to make analogies to this and how we can use chat gpt in this so uh, i just got this from internet just to exp like if anyone if you want to refresh on photosynthesis just to look at this and get that refresher so uh, what i want you to really think of is can you suggest any analogies for this uh, i have some with me but i'll just let you kind of think about it a bit and we'll go to that one that i have yes that's true and uh, this happens in uh, chlorophyll right so the analogy to if you complete the analogy a uh, human body would be the yeah, corresponding thing so maybe think of uh, cooking think of cooking in the sense i'll i'll show you guys this this so here you have the raw material so some food and then you use so there is uh, this cooking utensil right a saucepan or something like that that would be the chlorophyll and then you still need energy in both cases so the energy would be light in photosynthesis and in cooking food you would have fire or something heat and there are uh, products at the end so this is from internet so i found a, another interesting one uh, this one this other one with bake, making bread so i think it's pretty neat because it has every element mapped so uh, in some cases in analogies the, the issue is that you sometimes don't get to map every point but still it's helpful so in both cases right in that making bread case uh, case you have a delicious aroma and it is kind of like analogous to this o2 byproduct that you get right so uh, that is one interesting thing so uh, you guys use chat gpt right you have so the question is whether uh, technology helps you remember the, yes. you know we call this photosynthesis as a source uh, uh, a target something that you need to understand and these other examples as source so having understood the is it better to you know is it easier to remember um, making bread from your uh, you know general knowledge common sense uh, something that is not very technical and since that is more like day-to-day -day activity more something that is very familiar to, to, to you if that is the case then would uh, you know be would it be easy for you to remember those scientific concepts that by itself may look a little bit alien in your to try and memorize your remember so that's the question that's the question we are asking so uh, because dr shit mentioned this so uh, photosynthesis normally in in in, uh, in scientific kind of analogy uh, speak the the one thing that you're familiar with right so here photosynthesis is the one that maybe you're trying to learn so um, that would be the uh, target concept that you're trying to learn and from this cooking food or whatever domain that you would like to make an analogy it would be like the source uh, domain so uh, We'll have a hands-on session, but I'll just show you. So you use ChatGPT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the prompting and all these things, right? So what we are trying to do is we are trying to see whether humans can make this analogy and how ChatGPT makes analogies and what are the limitations and how can you do better? Can you start with an analogy from ChatGPT and make it better? Things like that. So I'll just show you a few prompts that you can use but you are free to use any prompts that you like. But what I found is that this third prompt, right, identify the main components of photosynthesis and give an analogy for each. If you type that in ChatGPT, for some uh, 
analysis, I find that it gives more uh, coherent uh, output. So you can try that in a later session that when we do hands-on sessions. So I have to say that ChatGPT is actually very good. So before that, we were trying to do a lot of analogies, a lot of these other language models that my colleagues probably have spoken to you. They were not that good, but ChatGPT is very uh, good in these things. So uh, there's another thing, uh, another analogy, Earth's interior structure. Have you come across this, this picture or this concept before? So, okay. So. Uh, there's this four things, right? There's a crust in the Earth's like the very outer core. Then there's a mantle. Then there is this outer core and inner core, all of these things. So if someone asks you, okay, explain this to someone else with an analogy, what would you use? So, sorry? Okay. Okay, nice. Okay, yeah, right. Uh, I have this as a candy, so I'll explain this later, but do you guys have any other suggestions? If I ask you to explain to me what an analogy is. So layer cake is, is, is an interesting example. So how would you map these different uh, parts, inner core, outer core mantle to different layers? Okay. 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 So, do you think this makes sense? We have lots of teachers in this thing. I think I used two times, but this this was very popular because uh, they say this outer skin is like the crust, the very outer part. Then the mantle is like a moving thing, and the core is like the stone, but it has two parts. Then some part is missing, right? So yeah. Want to? Try anything else? Okay. Water bottle. Yeah. Water bottle. Water bottle. How? How? How many ads have to get to the various But then the very core should be uh, solid, right? Oh, do you think those, um, you know those campings that like burn and they have a hard outside and there's a little hole and there's like juice inside? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so uh, we actually were trying to find out a candy actually for this, this thing because we were writing something and we wanted an analogy for the specific earth structure. So we were thinking of these uh, candies, not, none of them. So I'm not very familiar with candies that we have here. So we were talking with a lot of people and then what we did was we actually came up with our own candy. <laughs> So <laughs> we did not make it. We hope people would like something like that. But we thought, okay, we'll we'll try to create our own thing because we wanted to map, right? So if the core is solid, we wanted to map that with something that is edible and maybe solid. So we came out with this. Do you guys think it makes sense? Yeah. So this again the same template, but it's changed for a earth, a earth structure. So what are the limitations of analogies that you think? We talked about all the good things. So now what are the limitations? So that's true. Sometimes uh, analogy, if, if you come up with a bad analogy, right, if you kind of try to 
if you have given a bad analogy even yes movie in my case i thought all the movies and it's true so uh, if you stuck onto a bad analogy right you will get all the wrong information the thing is with analogies you'll remember that also so that is the bad part so uh, we have another set of questions so this is because now you have some understanding of analogies like right? right so it would probably be the same questions i'm not sure but yeah it would be the same amount of questions so yeah you can go ahead and maybe Oh. You have it open, right? There's one question you probably might because we haven't had the hands on session. You can just skip it or you can say uh, we didn't get to the session yet or something like that. You might not be able to submit without an answer, so you can say something on like this.
for anyone who is done with the survey, they can just try to open up the chat GPT or log into chat GPT. So we, we use that. So before uh, the next session, right, it would be hands on. So if you want to get a break and come back, uh, it's fine. We'll do that. So it would be a hands on session for so individually. We'll try to look at that GPT and how it does with analogy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anything. Okay, so uh, so what we are trying to do is, so I'm actually picking one concept, cellular respiration, but you don't have to specifically use this. If you want, you can use this, but uh, you can use, if you want to know more about how ChatGPT make analogies for photosynthesis, you can do that. But uh, so try to come up with your own analogy. So we discussed a lot, right? I try to come up with your own analogy and then query ChatGPT with any prompt that you would like. So I'll uh, go back to the prompt that I had also and see how it answers you and how your analogy compares. And we will see uh, how it, whether it's better, whether it's not that good and why may be the case, right? So yeah, I'll try to, so this is for the earth structure. These are the uh, queries for earth, uh, the prompts for earth structure, but you can change this for whatever analogy that you would like. So let's say you want a GPT to create an analogy for photosynthesis, right? Just try to use any of the prompts or all of the prompts and see what it gives. 
and that it, whether you agree with it and compare it with your own analogy, what you will get. So we'll see how they compare and we'll see why that happens, whether ChatGPT is better or not, if not why. So you can try with the solar system, that is one, or maybe try with datum and see whether it comes up with anything else. Uh, what else? You could do simple things like gravity. How, what, what is analogous to gravity? So I actually have an analogy, just that picture there is an analogy actually for this cellular respiration. But see whether you can get chat GPT to get different ones. All the time would it give the same one? We'll see why that happens. And you can try to have your own uh, prompts also to see what it. So uh, when uh, when my colleagues talked about prompting, right? Did they uh, talk about different types of prompting? Uh, do you guys remember anything about how to ask ChatGPT questions and different types of prompting? So with ChatGPT, right? Uh, so there are different ways that you can prompt it. Maybe this is not uh, specifically for this particular session, but I'll, I'll try to explain a few. So uh, do you know what ChatGPT is? Probably he explained, but just to refresh uh, what ChatGPT is. So there is this thing called language models or language modeling, where what you try to particularly do is, there is some model, right, something, uh, that you have and you feed it a lot of data like uh, billions maybe trillions of documents that one so a lot of uh, these re researchers that do train these models they use this one particular kind of uh, uh, corpus of data that is called the common crawl that that is basically like you're crawling the entire internet you're getting everything that is public in the entire internet and feeding it to the model so uh, when I say model, right, what it is, is a bunch of numbers, actually. So you have this bunch of numbers. And when you ask it something, right, you send some text. Again, you convert it to numbers, you send it. And how that numbers change because of the prompt that you give, that comes out at the answer. So it's like the very, very crude level, but that is what happens. So the more data that you have, right, it would have better idea of, uh, let's say a world for, for now, right? If it, think of a human, right? Let's say we have the capacity to read everything and remember everything. The more we read, right, the more we will remember and understand. So let's think of this machine as a human and you feed a lot of things to it. It would be pretty good, right? If you ask something, it would have, because it has the memory, it would say, okay, this happens in here. And it would have memory of all the books it has ever read. Probably it's all the books that ever have been written. Then 
why would people say that these models are not that good? They should be good, right? Why do you think that it is not that good? Because it thinks everything is true, so it can take it. Yeah. Make knowledge and think that that's actually true. That's true. So, yeah, but you're, you're, you're spot on with that. And there's some additional part to it, right? So it's, it's, it's a baby's bone, right? The knowledge that it gets from outside, is it just books and web pages? It's that only. So there is this thing called the grounding of knowledge. So I know even before I understand this concept of gravity, I know if I keep something and just like let go of it, it will fall. So that is called a grounding of knowledge. So you ha you have this ability to touch things physically and feel. To, to experience that. The problem with all of these modules is there is no a notion of experience. If I write that anything that has a weight, if I let it go above ground and it would fall down, it would really capture that. But it is the connection between the words that it is capturing, not the real experience. So that is one backlash with all of these models. So experience and grounding is not there. So that is one big disadvantage. So try to connect that with analogies. When ChatGPT is making analogies, it it would maybe it's I because I have tried this and I've tried models before ChatGPT, which were really bad at some point. So you've heard of Bert and all these Albert and there are all these Sesame Street characters, <laughs> language models on that. So all of these models initially were very, very bad, actually, not that good. But ChatGPT was very different in the sense it was trained on a lot of data and it has a, a feedback mechanism where you can give some feedback to the model. So that is why ChatGPT was very good. So now when I see how ChatGPT makes analogies, you almost feel that it is really good. But if you really look into the uh, outputs that it gives, you probably would spot the issues. I think Mega yesterday talked about hallucination and all that. So it would tell you things that it is not true. So that could seep into making analogies, right? So I just want you guys to see if you uh, analogies that it makes and see whether you can spot these differences and whether you can actually claim that uh, humans make better analogies. Or oh, what if that you can start with an analogy from ChatGPT, something that you might not have seen because you don't have the capacity to see everything, right? Read everything, but this model has. So why not use that capacity? Ask it to create something, but then you're better than it because you can ground your knowledge. So you'll see the issues, right? So you can start from the analogy ChatGPT gives and but correct it maybe. So that is a better way to go. So you, you will understand the concept and you will understand it uh, better because you're trying to correct it. So that helps in uh, retaining whatever that you learn and also remembering. Yeah, so just, I think you make an important point there that you know, it's, that's always a challenge in education with anything with analogies is you have to understand what it's comparing it to. So you may, in like chemistry, there's a plum pudding model, and I can't remember which, you know, it's one of the earlier as a model, but if you don't know what plum pudding is, like, you know, at the time, everybody would have, right? Then that doesn't make any sense to you. And the same thing, so ChatGPT can suggest things, but it, it, as a teacher, if your students don't know what that analogy is, or if you're reading it, then it's, yeah, so that's, you know, that's the part, you know, there's so many different connections finding the one but it'll help you otherwise you're limited to what your teacher knows or what you know so this at least allows you to, yes. to get get a more wide uh, so dif different domains so we'll be we'll looking to that how different domains would come into this so let's say uh, so let's say uh, i want an analogy but maybe I like movies more, or I like 
some of you like music more or sports more and if i actually give you an analogy from the domain that you like right that you are interested in you might remember it better so how can chatgpt do that so when initially we were trying to do this uh, figuring out good analogies is a hard problem even for humans right so the atom is like a solar system things like that uh, come up with several uh, analogies like that it's it's not very easy as in the sense you cannot come up with 10 in one go maybe you have to think a little bit about it so what we are trying to see is whether there's a more uh, uh, better way to efficiently make these analogies more analogies maybe that could cater to all of you in this room so how can you do that that is actually a research question because of these limitations of the models right so uh, what we we'll try to do now is if you guys are done with the individual thing we'll see whether we can figure out any limitations of chat gpt with your analysis that you have i can actually come to you and we will see what what happens or anything like that are you i can come to you thanks <coughs> Just, uh, uh, did you uh, uh, do the individual session? Yeah. Uh, do you find any issues with ChatGPT that you had? Um, did you anything? I did. <clears throat> I did an analogy that was really complex. And it gave me something that was like way more confusing. Okay. <clears throat> I asked for an analogy for quantum physics. Okay. I asked for one for quantum physics, and it told me it was like a game of cards where the rules constantly change and for example, like a one card might be both red and black at the same time, or it could be in multiple places at once. Oh. So it is just kind of, yeah. But it is a really complex topic that would probably be hard to talk about. Maybe. Yeah. 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 You can ask. You can ask. So there's this method of talking, which is good. Explaining <coughs> about this chain of thought prompting. So there are different types of prompting. So one is that you go step by step. You just don't ask everything from the chat GPT in one go. You just ask from it. Uh, so she was asking about uh, quantum physics. So when you just type quantum physics, give me an analogy. It was very confusing. So what you can do is you could uh, ask it, what are the main two concepts or main five concepts or whatever? In, in quantum physics. Probably ChatGPT would be very good in uh, doing that because quantum physics has a lot of books written about it. Probably they are public and probably they are training data for ChatGPT. So it's like very, you can't really say it understands. It could give you the sentences back. So it could probably, so ChatGPT right now is very good at summarization. So creating and summary. So it's very good at that. So it would kind of try to do that and pick two concepts and give that. So you can build up on that. Okay, this is the first concept. Give me an analogy for this first concept. So when you are asking it about these concepts, right? Try to see some, try to look for something very simple. So you know very well that you can compare it with. That would give you a better idea. Yes, yeah. that's why I was talking about chain of thought.
Um, <clears throat> it, like, the the connections to talk about all the treasure chest, talk about all the batteries and recycling. Okay. Like, say, you know, oh, we think any of that is useful. Because it helps you understand if you don't, like, if you, if you don't like, for someone that we know, it's like frustration is looking at finding a different concept of data and different concepts to understand this. Like, for the person that doesn't get study restoration, they probably know like they probably should have to go back to the other journal, like um, falling down the road. How do you compare that to the other one? So, um, I'm going to get the because they broke your brokers down and they talked about your cellular respiration, there's 18 and they're like, oh, it's 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 in the first row, it could give you a lot of information. So what I mostly try to do is, is give you five sentences, and it would try to uh, summarize it. Yeah. You can try one call at a time. It's working on a very large data set. This is not like the context that you can Now, did you, did you also tell them uh, you need to give the context earlier and say, I'm looking for this, maybe it will be better. Right? You need to tell bounds to the guy from the team. What is it? Give the context to start with. So, if you, if you tell this model that I'm a student who is trying to understand this concept, maybe photosynthesis, uh, I'm maybe a high school student, and try to see how it gives you different. Uh, Answers. If you say I'm college students, see how it gives you the different answers. Okay, so you're trying to avoid that. I'll say an open question. How would that analogy get together? I think it's an analogy. Is that anything you can say? Yes. 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 Yeah, that's, that's what I thought has also this concept of things that I can never think of. Yeah. But then the thing is, like, uh, what did we get from the analogy for that? I don't know the answer. I had a whole conversation with it. It was interesting because I asked it, like, how would you think of it? Yeah, you asked for cellular respiration. Yeah. I'll say it's like a capital. Yeah, I thought it was really good. So I was like, how did you come up with that? And then, like, it started talking about like computer yeah. science stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. You did the same thing. You did the same thing. So, not cellular respiration. Yeah, because right, you asked for cellular respiration. You asked for cellular respiration. It gives different answers. So, yeah. You asked for to explain that. Even an Wait, well, what is the analogy? Um, <laughs> it's, 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 okay. Yeah, so it's water. It says a dance of backwards. Do you think that is the Yeah, I mean, so it does not. Is there any? You think that it's kind of weird, but it makes sense. Yeah, that's the thing. So basically, that's what you're saying. So basically, it's like how do you work about something? So it's not a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's not 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 a good one. Specifically, 
Did you find it interesting? Oh, yeah. Did yeah. Oh, I think the short uh, series. You don't want to read it in that paragraph, right? Yeah. Whenever I call them, so you like, they always like think of how it sounds like a judge. That's it. That is it. That is it. Tell it simply how you want it. That's the way it is. Does it make sense? Write with something more interesting. Like give it to what field you want the analogy to be from. Cellular respiration to what? So maybe try to put some indoor or outdoor. So we do know what you see is that it can give some the training data. So for example, you say here, Yeah, that's why I just asked first to do this and then we'll see the problems in that. Mm -hmm. and go from that. <laughs> I've seen this, I've not done this, but 
can try that. So I asked uh, from each of you what are the problems that you came across, but can you just for, for the sake of your friends, uh, just share what, what limitations did you find when ChatGPT was giving you analogies? What, what were the issues with that? Was it better than you? I had to specify what type of research and how it's very basic. So you were asking for analogy for what? Uh, like, like a food with a okay, yeah, that's the one we are going to do. Okay. So, yeah. okay. So that's a limitation. Where it, it would not really give a very nicely thought out analogy like a human would like. We try to map to each concept in an in the in the in the main concept that you would like to learn, right? If it's cellular respiration, there's there is some component that would map to glucose, right? And there should be another component that would map to oxygen. So like that, if, so what you can do is you can engineer your prompt that it would give out that. So you'd say, okay, figure out the main components of cellular respiration and give me an analogy for each. But one issue that I have found out doing this is it would give a bunch of unrelated uh, analogies then for each concept, which is not useful. Then you try to see whether you can combine that. So, uh, so one thing I have found over the time I use ChatGPT is the more specific, as specific as you can be in your prompt, the better the output is. 90% of the time. Sometimes if you are too specific, it's just gonna take up one word from your uh, prompt and just talk about that, which might be completely unrelated. But you need to be a lot more specific. Let's say many of you were getting like paragraphs of paragraphs for analogy. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna say that give me an analogy, but in a sentence yes. or in 10 words or just in two words. Or some of you can Try just giving an example of the kind of analogy we mm -hmm. use. Yes, with an example. So, and you could you could try to say, give me five analogies for cellular respiration and see what it gives you. Because if someone asks you, right, give me five analogies for respiration, what would you say? So, cellular respiration, yeah, any, any concept. <laughs> you were just doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. So, how can you use this this kind of as a tool to get you going? And maybe you come across one good thing and you remember it. That is the important thing that you remember it. But then you have to be again very mindful because we talked about bad analogies, right? It will stick to you and it would be wrong information. So that is that is the that is one issue with this type of things. That is why this is actually research that we are doing research on this because these models will give you things and you would think that this is because it's grammatically very correct and it, you feel like this is very good. It's very good analogy, but you have to really look into it to find these issues, right? So. 
so we'll uh, try a group session but here uh, the difference that i want to want you guys to see is uh, you could <laughs> you could find uh, you could pick any concept that you like but but the difference here is uh, ask chat gpt to create an analogy but then try to see okay give me an analogy for uh, photosynthesis but in sports domain see whether it can give you an analogy in sports domain first see whether you can come up with one in that particular domain so that that is maybe the limitation a limitation that we have with very short amount of time maybe we'll be panicked and we will not really think but chat gpt might give you something <laughs> maybe you can correct it on top of that so that is one interesting thing yeah so, one thing that all of you can try once you come up with your own analogy to do a two different types of prompt one where you just mm -hmm. ask it analogy right off the bat and then another one you give it your analogy as an example and then you hmm. ask it to find uh, an analogy. See if it comes up with something more interesting when you give your analogy as an example. Yeah. And you could do uh, this as a group, or if you have any questions, right, after interacting with this, why these models work like that, or anything related to language modeling or anything, you can ask us, you can ask me. Yes, it's, it's, yeah, three people that's four groups, right? Yeah, so if you guys can yeah, get together with whoever the three that is close by, we can go so with that. I haven't yeah, so when, uh, yes. you guys can just like bring your chairs, learn closer and discuss. And see what that can be. Yeah, but just make your own something. Yeah, try to do with the domains this time. I'll restrict it to domains and see whether it's good, better. Yes, anything for photos you can make, but you can just do it first. So, you guys can decide on one topic, maybe, and try to see. Uh, pick one domain if you're interested in food like the the earth structure the analogies we had like that candy and the peach all of that from the food domain right maybe we could find something in the sports domain don't be shy make it good find a name or yeah, you can do that. Try, try maybe from a very simple one that you can assess it on. Try and, and show each other what. Yeah, and then go to quantum computing or something like that. You really don't know, and maybe try to see what it is. You do. Yes. An analogy for a lot. So still, it doesn't have to be for science so anything that you learn in school if you're interested in something else, I don't know, make up or something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, I Stop. Yes. Oh my God. 
That's not an analogy. That's a higher level. Okay. So, so, so <laughs> That's like a form of like you can't make an analogy for like a bad thing. I can't do this. Analogy for why you How is that even <laughs> I did like the solar system and it's like, it's like a pizza. Okay, so we are Trapeze, Leslie, and the domain. It's like a dream. It makes like, it makes very like, it puts together really well. It's made it, it made the wife tower. It's fucking who's on this. It's almost like a cow. It explained the main concepts of linear algebra. It's like so like Why did you say that? Why did you keep trying to ask you to explain the concept of this? Maybe it's a call. Maybe I think the main day is created the subjects from these guys like the Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, if you're on the phone, you need to read this. Alright, let's see if this is better. This it makes sense. Yeah. So when you say that in the code, right? Do you say that you want that energy from what peaks? I said, give me an analogy for Scientology. No, we have peaks. So I think we should make it a little bit. Peaks is not a domain. It's a concept. Honestly, I think that's. I said like analogy for the solar system and it said it's like a pizza. Oh, in the physics. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. I, well, I think, I think that that's so what was the nucleus? Yeah. Uh, for the nucleus, what did it say for the corresponding part for the nucleus? Well, it's like the sun. It's oh, like, yeah, sun. It's like the crust, which I guess it doesn't make sense because it's like on the outside, but it's like the largest thing. Um, yeah. 
and like it like provides the base for the system. Did you say like science? Oh, okay. Yeah. See. I think it just didn't go that detailed. It just did like the basic components like studs and and like drones. Right, so so the point is though. But the thing is, it's a specific you know, concept. Like, so, you have to basically use the sign. Even if you have probably a vehicle, you have to type in address. These are called sub-bullets. And the time should you take the steering wheel. You have to sign the address. So you have to try and make it do what you want. You have to question that. But this aspect is not covered. The energy is not. Ask whether the energy is very good. Can you make it more perfect? And then say, but 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 add this aspect. Sun is a sun cloud. How how does what what would be that? Is this still good enough that covers sun? Ask that or or you say sun has um uh, you know um, <laughs> very high temperature. You have something. Is that is not. I think uh, it faces more challenges when we focus on, okay, give me an analogy in this domain. When we ask that, it's, it's, it's really hard. It will give something. We never say, I don't know. But then there's this challenge of making the new connections. So let's just put it on question? No, I'm going to talk about it again. I asked to explain the main concepts of the linear algebra of the name of Lego. And he said, like, he almost did as blending different shapes of foundation. And, and then, like, linear combinations of different eyeshadow colors to achieve desired eye looks and dimensions of proportion. Do you think it makes sense? Well, I don't know anything about linear algebra. So, okay. so, so let me ask something about like what you know. Really. Yes. Then you can ask it. Yeah, then you can. So did you change it or just uh like it that was so the main
music. But it is the one thing you can I think you yeah, at some point yeah. it's like you're talking about just science, right? Not science logic. Yeah. 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 And not let it be very high level to the future. Mm -hmm. See so how we make it more yeah. even if it came at any period of time. No, 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 no. I can't do that. 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 Okay, uh, what was your uh, the Give it like uh, sort of your data. Only changes you can do is the same thing. It's like 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 the same thing. Bloom's taxonomy category. So this is one. Uh, yeah, you can go to this. This link and there, there should be a few questions. This is four minutes at three. Just share.
Anyone who is done with this can go to this next one. It's the kind of exit thing uh, that you, very first you did the post uh, session thing. This is the uh, pre session thing. This is the post session thing. So, so after, once they do that one, then you do that. This, after this one, uh, I'll now put the other one. Okay. It's a per post survey. Okay. So I just uploaded that, that one.
Did you ask what the word is? The sweet fruit of the They can be taught. I just Still going? All done? Two people on smartphones, it looks like they're done. <laughs> I think it's easier to, this questionnaire somehow is easier to do in phone. I think it is. It's, it's, it's not hard to do on the phone, right? The questionnaire. Yeah. It's some some tool called tricks or something. I don't know this, but it seems like they use it so much. Yeah. 
in education. Yeah, quite easily. I don't know. I didn't know this before. No, I'm sure for our okay proposal, so we use this. Oh. So do you have any questions that you would want to ask of this session? No, we're too tired now. But thank you very much for actually doing all this uh, survey. It really helps. And yeah. And I'm, if, if you got, got something that you could use in your classrooms when you're learning concepts, com complex ones, uh, if you think you'll use some of this, uh, it's great and I'm happy. So, you know, we showed you that for the text, we can create the graph and then um, as you write the text or as you copy the text from chat GPTs, you create the graph, you have graph for the original concept and automatically create the mappings to show you what parts are already covered, what are not covered. Thus, you'll be able to check the accuracy of analogy, completeness of analogy um, in real time using this uh, in the ground it requires this knowledge graph so uh, our, our plan is to uh, see if this can help uh, improve uh, education in the earth science course that you guys take and that will be the first you know uh, so there is a plan to uh, at least we're going to propose doing it in seven courses seven classes um, at two of the schools that you guys have in your district and then if it works well, then we can let it go scaling it further. But we have to do still a lot of work in terms of developing those tools and such. So right now we told you about the plan and how this will work, and I hope you've got a sense that it's one thing to get a uh, good sounding, good you know, a, a textual analogy from generative AI. It is another thing to, to ensure that it specifically covers all the concepts you need to learn and, and, and whether the right source, right domain that you understand you know, more naturally can help you retain those concepts better. So for a given um, you know, concept to learn, let's say for those synthesis, we could take analogy from sports domain, from music domain, from uh, a regular household domain. That kind of thing is the idea. If people can learn using familiar domain uh, to learn more complex and new concepts. That is a general idea. This is what pedagogy for analogy people have been talking about. Right? Now we are saying whether technology can help us do that. So, so is the like goal that like, you have a class of 30 students and like the student plays football, then their analogies like in some way down the road, then they're mostly like, it would make those analogies to football. This person is you know, like that they would or like that students just like Facebook saves all the right, you know, like has all you know, you know, like has their ads targeted to people like to target education based on their interests and what we are that two different things one is that um, we uh, provide them the analogy to understand mm -hmm. and the um, analogy is already built for them okay. they use it to understand uh, use a familiar domain to understand uh, new concepts in science and such or math the other is that they build the analogy themselves okay. um, but that is more uh, advanced. So we certainly do the latter for uh, um, college students and the like that, mm -hmm. but we are not sure that um, for the high school student, uh, developing technology from scratch by themselves uh, is good. Um, hopefully the students saw that, um, uh, I think ChatGPT is interesting, it can do some, you know, 
and it's something that sounds like a decent analogy, but could be often missing out the specificity, the concreteness that you know that you actually have. Well, so suppose that, one one person got an analogy. I think you have said you know, sun and pizza. Mm -hmm. That analogy, you know, it, it can be. It depends on how you look at it. The high level, it looks side. Yeah, okay, they want brown. But at the other level, there are specific things about sun that we want to teach. That we need to understand. Well, it's a gaseous object, let's say. Yeah. Now, how is pizza anything about gaseous object? It's very hot. Did it tell you it's hot pizza? Yeah. So, what point here is that? Right. So, so if it's going to do that, and uh, it says the other thing is it's gaseous. Pizza is not gaseous. Is that you know it's very hot? There may be some gas coming out, but that's only for a short time, and after that, it's cold. Uh, but anyway, the, those are the issues. You know, being making a good analogy versus some analogy that sounds entertaining is a very, very different thing. Right? Well, it goes back to what you were saying with health, where you need the physician to survey it. You may not, I know people, but you need somebody who understands what the standards for that age. Yeah. Say, okay, that's a good analogy, or that's too complicated, too easy. Right. right. There are many, you know, contextual differences and you know, many details uh, that you you look at. A, 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 a person of age seventy years unspecified pain. Uh, you may look for a lot of things, including uh, cardiovascular problems, heart problem, chronic heart problem. But if the same thing is for a you know, 15 year old, you don't look for heart problem. So unless he was playing a football. <laughs> so, you know, what I'm saying is that this, uh, there are a lot of, uh, in getting those details right, you need more structured knowledge that this knowledge does provide. And that is our uh, belief and assumption that um, uh, generally I won't be able to do that very well. But, but there is a value, for example, a genetic AI can give us a starting point to quickly create an analogy, get us started, and then modify it to cover all the concerns you need to learn. That would be an appropriate option. That would be a good option. Sometimes starting, you know, if you are to just imagine yourself without any help, it's very hard. This will get you started. So that is the idea. So we would, we could use uh, genetic AI techniques to initially get uh, crude anal uh, uh, um, analogies. And then refine them and make them perfect and present those students to the you know, high quality analogies for them to learn. So tomorrow, I mean, I, I um, for the responses, uh, I got to see anonymized responses that you guys have given. Uh, and, uh, you know, it looks like you have interest in uh, seeing all the work we do here, as well as uh, you like demos and, you know, those things more. So tomorrow, um, we're going to give you uh, demos of a whole bunch of um, uh, you know AI uh, applications and tools that we have built. Um, also, um, you know, whenever you have time tomorrow, I mean, you see that there will be about uh, 25, uh, 30 posters all around here. So you can just at least look at the title and then read the rest if you are interested. We'll be there to explain anything that you are interested. So depending upon time. You also browse the poster, and then um, we will show you a couple of videos uh, of uh, high school students and undergrad students who have done internships here, and what have they achieved. So, if you um, uh, uh, you know if, if you think that AI is really what you want to pursue, and really just like um, some of you guys may be doing science fair, uh, there are also robotics competition. Similarly, if you wanted to do something in AI, then um, you get a sense of what you could do. Um, there was a, uh, I'll show you a video of a um, high school student from California. He did internship, not only really an internship, he, he ended up really writing a paper in a uh, pretty high quality con uh, you know, conference. So, uh, and then he went to UC Berkeley uh, for his undergrad. So, uh, just like uh, when you go for science fair and you do well, uh, it helps you a lot with your college uh, admissions. Similarly, any of such activities could help. Uh, but 
you know, at least it gives you an idea, even if you don't do it in AI, you can start thinking about doing something else. Those are all the options. And you guys heard uh, that other guys who was, sorry, high school students and other guys also worked at Mekme um, and you guys there. So these are the approaches that, yeah, that you need to keep in mind, that you can keep in mind. All right, you go on. Thank <laughs> you.